Hey everyone, Patriot back again. You can see I found a beautiful Palo Verde tree here to uh, get a little bit of shade. Uh, now that I'm in the shade, I guess I'll put my hat up here. So uh, what I wanted to discuss in this segment is the flexibility that a good optics tripod uh, offers. Its ability to quickly mount and dismount different sets of optics and just the flexibility and setup which I kind of touched on yesterday. This is a tripod made by Manfrotto, distributed by Bogan, as you can see right there. The model itself is a 3221WN, which I believe stands for Wilderness. This one also has padded main legs right here, which is great for in the summertime because these are a lot cooler to touch than just the bare metal, which can get pretty hot, especially in that black anodizing. And then up here, we have a telescoping or an adjustable center column or center shaft. Now I did customize this one a little bit and shortened the length of the center shaft so that when I had the legs spread out wide like they are now, the bottom of this isn't hitting the ground. I think I took about three inches off of that. And then that. up here on the legs, these are, these latches up here allow you to use the legs in a primary position which limits the extension angle or you can push these in and pull them out and go to a wider the tripod head is actually a video head this one's made by Manfrotto it's a 701 RC2 and this one actually has a spring inside of it that will resist some of the weight that's applied to it so if I push it over like this it springs back this way if I push it down like that it tends to spring back up a little bit by itself so that way if you're looking down a hill or looking up at something, some of the weight that's on top of the tripod head gets offset or resisted by that spring. That makes you or allows you to lift up less weight Adjustable. on the handle. This is the tension here for the tripod head pitch. And this is for lateral tightening. And up top we have a quick release plate with a, a big camming arm right here. Now this plate is also adjustable forward and back so that if you get an optic that is maybe a little bit tail heavy, you can slide, or nose heavy, you can slide this to put more pressure on the front or more pressure on the back. Now one of those accessories that I can quickly mount and dismount is this T-head. This is also made by Manfrotto. It's a solid bar stock of aluminum with uh, various attachment points underneath and as you can see I have one of those camera plates right here which allows me to quickly snap this on and cam it down and now that thing is solid it's not going anywhere and the nice thing about this all I have to do is flip a lever and this whole assembly comes right back off again now the ball head that you see on here on the secondary optic side is the Pro Ball 308 RC this is also made by Manfrotto and distributed by Bogan. Over here on this side is Leica's binocular plate. So I'm just going to drop this back on here again and then I'll show you some of the optics options. So one of my popular combos that gets a lot of use is just to mount a uh, 10 power optic up here. This is the Swarovski 10 by 32 EL and I'll mate that up here with my camera. So what this allows me to do is I can actually walk with the tripod with the legs extended and I can view through the 10 power and optic. I can also take pictures at the same time. Once the binocular is mounted on here, I can tighten the uh, tripod head down, look at a distant object or a point, center it in the field of view, then I can take my camera and loosen the tripod head here or this ball head and then I can zero this in to the exact same point where the binocular is pointed and tighten this down. Now it'll remain coaxially aligned. Another line. combo that I'll use that gives me two sets of binoculars on the same rig here with different magnification. Right now I'm putting on the uh, 15 by 56 Swarovski SLC and over on the other side I'm just going to take my pair of uh, hiking Leicas, lock down this uh, bino mount here and go ahead and tighten that down. Now I've got an 8 power binocular here and I've got a 15 power 
right below it. So if I'm doing some wide area searches or trying to really pay attention to movement out in the field, I can sit here and view through the eight powers. And if I need a much closer look, but still having the advantages of viewing with two eyes versus one eye with a spotting scope, I can come over here to the 15s and get a great look through those. Okay, for the next demo, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the uh, Swarovski 15s attached here. And I got out the uh, excellent Leica APO Televid 77. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lock on here. Now this has an adjustable collar here for the uh, mounting plate that allows this to rotate back and forth. And what I've done is offset this so that I can bring, lay this over to the side, bring the pro ball down. That way it puts it closer and lower to the other optic. That way I don't have to stretch way up high and move as so far I'm just back. Lock this in here. Cam this down, flip the safety lock so that this can't come off. Now what I would do is again to coaxially align these, I would aim at a distant object with the binocular and then I would loosen this, bring this over like this and align this on the same distant object and tighten it down. So here's what that looks like from the other side here. And here it is from the back side. You can see with that much weight slung over on the side, having this real stout pro ball makes a big difference. And of course what that looks like from the front side. Okay, back up top again here to show you another option, leaving the uh, 15s in place. These are the 1042 ELs back again. And this gives me a 10 power and a 15 power option. Again, much wider field and view. And then more detailed look at farther range. And of course, all combinations work. And the nice thing about the binocular strap is that it's flexible and adjustable. So now I've got the 8x32 Leica combined with the 10 power. Now this next combination is great uh, in the role of a spotter or somebody who's assisting in a hunt you can actually put a rangefinder here on this side and peer through the optics on this side so if you're doing some fast glassing and looking through your binoculars you can go down here and get instant range especially after you coaxially align these two here's yet another interesting option that offers a lot of nighttime capability all I have to do Take these binoculars off here, remount those down here. I've got a HID flashlight right here, and tighten that back down here. Now this is an 1800 lumen HID flashlight, so that's going to throw a lot of light down range. And with this particular light and the binocular setup, you can see as far out as, oh, about 300 yards pretty clearly. And again, we're not limited to any specific binocular. Uh, we can take this 10 power off and put the 8x32 right back on here. That one's a little slower to adjust. The fastest mount, of course, for the binoculars is the strap right here. Okay, guys, we're back to the uh, long range mount again with the 15s and the uh, spotting scope. And just wanted to show you additionally, now remember this camera plate comes off of here. I can throw a lever and this entire assembly comes off. I can set this aside or in the, uh, the front seat or whatever and instantly mount an optic and to that. And instantly mount a camera to that. So at this point you might be asking, uh, what are, what's the downside to all this? I mean, I've got a lot of performance and adjustability here, a lot of versatility. And uh, the downside, of course, is going to be the cost. I mean, we're all limited with uh, what we can afford and what we can do. Uh, I'm not going to recommend any of this stuff. I just told you what I had. I'll be recommending some uh, value options, though, for you. The other uh, penalty that it cost me is in weight. This is very heavy. For example, this assembly alone right here is about 9 pounds with the 15 Swarovskis and the uh, spotting scope with the camera plate, ball head, and these attachments. You can imagine the work that's involved in doing videos like this when you're carrying two tripods around, three or four binoculars, 
a spotting scope, a range finder, all my water, my food, my clothes, everything that I need to come out here for a day. So it's a lot of work, but I hope it was helpful and I hope that it gives you guys some ideas about what you might want to put together. And uh, I'll be happy to help. If you guys have any questions, just uh, send me a private message or ask in the comments and uh, I can make recommendations. Anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, appreciate the views and any comments, even suggestions. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.